Well, it's September 2012, and the world hasn't ended yet. We still have three months left to see whose predictions about 2012 were the most accurate. In my 2012 video, I think I lost a lot of people with my long-winded rant against religion and the tangents on life after death and what I think it all means. But overall, looking back three and a half years later, I think I did a pretty nice job. Some topics I didn't talk about were Nibiru, solar flares wiping out the electrical grid, meteor collisions, the zombie apocalypse, alien invasions, etc. The main reason I didn't talk about these types of things is because, well, if it happens, it happens. It's out of my control. I don't really see any point in discussing Armageddon scenarios or an extinction-level event, unless you want to talk about faking one in order to trigger a domestic police state takeover, like what would happen if the government announced that a meteor impact was about to wipe out the planet and everyone had 20 minutes left to live, and all the news stations did a live countdown. Just imagine. Well, at least that's one way to generate the immediate need for a declaration of martial law. Well, I guess let's just hope and pray that nothing like this ever happens, since we have absolutely no control over the outcome of any of these types of events. Let's talk instead about what we can do and what people are doing, including myself. It's now undeniable that there is a massive awakening currently taking place on this planet, thanks to the internet. Unfortunately, the disinformation and misinformation far outweighs the cleverly hidden and disguised truths. Like many other truth seekers out there who have decided to take their investigations to the next step and begin sharing their information and research with others, I have suffered and learned from the consequences this information can have and the shame of my errors and imperfections. Anyone who declares themselves a truth speaker or truth teller immediately opens themselves up to attack by skeptics, cover up artists, liars, haters, the people he exposes, you name it. I have tried my best to adhere to the principles of hard science and rigorous logic combined with creative imagination within the confines of theoretical possibility. In fact, I've recently made these lemmas the central focus of my homepage. Since I would prefer people learn these basic reasoning skills first before they try to dig through my content and formulate any conclusions about what the truth is and what isn't, I simply provide the information. The first thing I would like to talk about is the issue of accuracy, precision, and ego. It's not easy to sift through mountains of lies to find one thing that you can identify as truth. It gets even harder when you try to communicate that information with other people. One mistake and you risk discrediting everything you've worked for. One slip up and some people will judge all your other work by it. They hit stop, say this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, and click on something else. I'm not perfect, I never claim to be. No one can ever be right about absolutely everything all the time. No matter if our ego has tricked us into believing this to be. I try my best to admit when I make mistakes, and do my best to correct them. I value precision and the accuracy of my information over my own ego, and how a few judgmental people might view me. I tell my viewers to question everything even things I have said or may say in the future. Question everyone and question everything they say. Question yourself and question everything you think you know. Never be afraid to ask questions. Never be afraid of how others will perceive you for the questions you ask. There is no such thing as a stupid question. Questions lead to answers. Keep asking them. I used to have a lot of really great people who were asking a lot of really great questions on the alien scientist forums, but a lot of them went away after the forum got hacked. That virus wreaked havoc for three months, but it's finally gone for good. The forum software has been upgraded to the latest version and we should be protected from future attacks, so please come back. I'll try to post at least once a day on a topic I find interesting and I think is worth discussing. There's always interesting stuff going on somewhere out there in the world and I'm sure we can find plenty of things worth talking about. A lot of you want to know when I will have new videos coming out. I have a number of scripts I've been working on, including redoing a lot of my old videos to improve video and audio quality and the accuracy of information. It's a ton of work and it's not easy. I have videos I'm working on, and many others I started and dumped in the middle of the project in favor of something else. I've also been thinking of redoing everything compiled in one full-length documentary which I can put on DVD, so please bear with me. Aside from a few donations, I don't get paid to do any of this. I do it purely for my own interest in knowing and spreading the truth, and I do it for the future of our civilization, and what I think it could be like, and what I believe needs to be exposed and learned before we can ever hope to get there. Physics and science is number one in my opinion. I want to understand how everything works, and if it doesn't work, then it isn't real. Up until this point, all the money I've made has been through donations, and I only recently set up Google AdSense to experiment with running ads on my website to see if it's even worth it. I have an updated list of all donation money I have ever received on my website, so you can see exactly what I make. Not nearly enough to do this full time. Nonetheless, I have people accusing me of all kinds of things, which I guess just comes with the territory. Character assassination is always an excellent alternative when you don't have real arguments. Whatever, I'm going to try the advertising out since I'm getting accused of making all kinds of money already off ads that didn't exist. And I think the work that I've put into this, I deserve to make a little bit of money, and the ads aren't really that interfering. I won't put them on my YouTube videos because I hate having to sit through an ad when I want to just get information. 
Anyways, I'll see if the actual numbers are anywhere near the predictions, and I'll publish those results at the end of September. And if I make enough to do this full time, expect a ton of videos from me before the end of the year, or one big DVD by Christmas. I've spent the last three months updating and adding content to my website, AlienScientist.com, and finally I am happy to say that all the broken pictures and links should finally be fixed. So please, check out the new layout and content and let me know what you think. I added some new sections to the website, which will hopefully better organize some of the information and topics I think are important. I'm constantly updating things to better construct my arguments and add new information and resources. So if you have any helpful tips, advice, or information, please email me. I don't always respond, but I try my best to read everything. I've gotten a lot of requests from people who wanted to redo my website. Apparently some people don't like my choice of colors or design. If you want to redo my website, feel free to share any of my content. Make your own copy of my website with white background and black letters or, or whatever you were taught to do in your graphic arts or web design school. I like it the way I have it. To have as many backups of this information as possible on the web is a great idea. I encourage people to make mirrors of my website and put them up. This website project is essentially my effort to compile all the best information I can find on conspiracies, advanced technology, aliens, intelligence, mostly any project oriented with the future of our species, planet, and energy needs. Perhaps a bit neglected now is my section on education. My original goal was to compile all my lectures, notes, tests, papers, etc., and organize them into a massive collection of everything an undergrad physics major learns or should know, and make it easy to navigate. I have barely begun this process. What I've done so far is fill the sections out with just some preliminary content, mostly just basic stuff I copied off Wikipedia or hyperphysics, though there is some original content mixed in. Which is stupid and unoriginal, really, and I apologize. I had originally intended to go back and fill in those pages with my own original content based on my college notebooks and textbooks, but I soon realized what a massive undertaking that task was, basically revisiting all those hours of study just to copy everything over into a website form without violating copyrights on textbooks and whatnot. It'd be a great refresher to go over all that information again, but extremely time-consuming copying all those handwritten notes into an equation editor and then exporting them as picture files and whatever else I'd have to do. So what I've decided to try instead is to get some undergrad students or physics graduates out there who may be in my audience to help me. Each do one course apiece and I can just go over everything and edit it at the end and put it all together. I'm not sure completely what I want to do with this massive online physics education section and just how massive I want to make it, but I want it done right and I want it complete and I want it to be easily accessible to the average internet user. If any of you out there feel like this is something you could lend a hand with, please email me your resumes. I can set up a special section of the forum where we can work together on all the different subjects as a team project. I tend to view projects out there by their current and potential outcomes, most importantly the validity of their science or documentation. A topic like evacuated tube transport is something I support because it has valid, proven science behind it. No friction, no air resistance. Just a maglev train inside an evacuated tube. I know it will work. And I know that it has massive potential because I understand how important transportation is to everything. On the other hand, topics where the science is undetermined or where experiments have disproved a given hypothesis are something I don't support and will expose. I also do not support people who claim to have secrets or knowledge and yet attempt to hold that information or knowledge back. Release it. I'm all about disclosure here. Disclosure with science and scientific disclosures. And I'm going to expose you to the world whether you're real or a fake. One example I'd like to talk about briefly is the Kesha Foundation, who claims to have anti-gravity and is inviting world leaders to a public demonstration. He also has a lot of scientific subjects very similar to a lot of my material, yet the content is not there. I dig around and I can't find anything. It's all some big secret, it seems. Although I have talked to others who have witnessed his demonstrations personally, I am not convinced by anything other than hard, reproducible science. While others seem convinced by his live demonstrations of levitating objects, I say this is magic, and not science. Don't be fooled. My message for the Cash Foundation is, if you have real technology, release the science to people like myself, Sterling Allen of PES Wiki, the XPRIZE Foundation, etc. There's plenty of organizations out there which will help you expose it to the world. But I'm willing to bet $100 to anyone out there who wants to challenge me that by this time next year, Keshe and his foundation will have produced zero scientific independently verified evidence for any of his claims of free energy or anti-gravity. Of course, you'd be stupid to bet against me, because if it does turn out Kesh was telling the truth, and he really does have free energy technology, then $100 would no longer mean anything, and I would gladly hand you some worthless piece of paper. I do not believe in showmen and magicians. I believe in the laws of mathematically exact sciences, and only what can be proven with them. With Kesha, the science is just not there. I see a showman and a publicity hog. Sorry if I crushed anyone's hopes and dreams, but I'm a realist. I do not think the problem is that easy to solve.
If you don't believe me, we'll just have to wait and see. Also, please check out the new Energy Projects section on my website under the Projects tab, where I discuss all the available energy sources which have been scientifically proven to work and how they have been suppressed over the years. Another example is Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, which exposed that Iraq War helicopter shooting video that did absolutely nothing to stop the war in Iraq or Afghanistan. I'm sorry, but real journalists and real truth-tellers expose the lies that start wars. They expose the rampant corruption high in our own government, not small-time soldiers in the military overseas, not our foreign nationals and our ambassadors. They expose the politicians who start wars, and not the brave soldiers who actually fight in those wars. To top it off, Julian Assange claimed that he was withholding additional information from the Bradley Manning leak in a 1.73 gigabyte password-protected file named cables.csv that was supposedly circulating on the internet, and he threatened to release the password to unlock that file should anything happen to him. I'm sorry, but real leakers leak information. They don't withhold it for their own selfish purposes. What makes me lose even more faith in WikiLeaks and Julian Assange is the fact that the media is talking about him and actually covering the story. There's plenty of other, even better leaking websites, such as CryptoMe, OpenLeaks, etc., which are the real deal, and they don't get any coverage. Besides, you don't really need any website in particular, since the internet itself is basically one gigantic information leech, where you can instantly spread information to the entire world. From there, it's up to analysts and strategists like myself to go over this information, then report and compile what we believe is most crucial for the causes we support. My cause is to help defeat the old world order by exposing the deepest secrets of the last 60 years, which appears to be failing in many attempts, looking at how people's interest continuously attracts them toward meaningless debates and pointless struggles. I am doing my best to break people out of these stereotypes and compile the information I feel necessary for the survival of our planet and all the species on it. Except mosquitoes. Every single blood-sucking parasite should be purged from the earth, if you want my honest opinion. Which brings me to another topic. We have the elections coming in November, and it's time to really start pushing for serious changes, which aren't likely to come from either of the two choices we have for president. Shortly after Obama was elected and made his choice for a national security advisor, a lot of people were certain he was going to open up the government and start declassifying the important secrets and exposing the lies and corruption, close Guantanamo and bring the troops home like he would promised us he would during his election campaign four years ago. Unfortunately, here we are four years later, and none of that stuff ever happened. Things got much worse. The man is a total fraud. Obama's record as president speaks for itself, despite all the secrets people like Wayne Madsen have dug up from his past. Likewise, Mitt Romney from my home state and his running mate Paul Ryan are the epitome of everything Rage Against the Machine's music has ever been against, and everything I have devoted my life to fighting. America is in serious trouble if our election system expects us to pick between these two scumbags. The media is already shoving the Obama-rama down our throats as if these are the only choices we have as Americans. Once again, we must choose between a douche and a turd sandwich. The Libertarian Party is showing a strong potential as a third-party force in this upcoming election. And if they don't succeed, we are about to miss our last chance for a non-violent revolution we will get for another four years, since it's unlikely that either Obama or Romney will take any action against the treasonous war and financial criminals who bailed out their own friends on the American taxpayer's bank account. Iceland recently had a revolution where they went ahead and successfully dismantled their corrupt government by ordering the arrest of nine elite bankers for their responsibility for Iceland's financial collapse in 2008. This will work. This can work. This does work. It's time the Americans gave their Congress the same ultimatum. If we were to tell them, you have until the end of the Mayan calendar, 2012, December 21st, to arrest, jail, and bring criminal charges against all the banksters and other financial criminals destroying our economy. Just imagine they might actually be forced to do it. I've been thinking about what would happen if every single protester, occupier, or generally pissed off American agreed to all march on Washington, D.C. and demand the same thing as Iceland. Of course, the week before Christmas isn't exactly the best time to stage a massive protest in Washington. Yet what better Christmas present, right? Regardless of the effectiveness or feasibility of a massive protest, there is another important need for specialized action, which is in many ways more important than urging the government to make arrests and in my opinion will be much more successful in toppling the criminal establishment. Arrests require criminal charges, and criminal charges require evidence. And that evidence comes from individuals out there, and you know who you are, who possess the documented facts behind these massive financial crimes. Rather than try to organize and stage a massive protest on the prophesied date of the apocalypse, those people need to come forward and release everything, all at once, and there are plenty of great places to do that on the internet. Visit my friend Richard Grove's website, tragedyandhope.com, there's plenty of other sites out there. Richard Grove was a whistleblower on a large financial scandal that took place in the months leading up to 9-11.
Richard Grove was told to bring all his evidence of this major financial scandal to a meeting on the 93rd floor of the World Trade Center, but got stuck in traffic the morning of 9-11 and narrowly avoided his own death. Many others weren't so lucky. I'd be interested to investigate other people who were told to go to meetings on upper floors that day and see if any other 9-11 victims were connected in any ways to the suspects on our list. Richard Grove worked for L. Paul Bremer. In any case, anyone out there listening who has evidence of massive financial crimes or knows someone else who does, my advice is to disclose that information in full immediately to as many sources as possible who can be trusted to copy and pass that information on. The worst mistake you can make is withholding information, especially if that information is worth paying a hitman to kill for. The DC Madame's <coughs> suicide is a good example of what not to do. Be brave. Be on the right side of history. Come forward altogether on or before December 21st, 2012 and expose these massive financial and war criminals so that we can prevent them from destroying the world any further. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check all the links and sources in the description.